Great. Uh, I'd just like to welcome everyone to the Town of Greater Napanee regular session of council for the ninth day of April 2024. Just want to remind everyone that this evening's meeting is being live streamed uh, through our, our uh, YouTube channel, and it'll be put on our YouTube channel. And for those that can't uh, watch tonight, uh, they'll be able to watch it later on. So it'll be on the YouTube channel for virtually eternity, I think. So anyways, welcome, everyone. <laughs> Uh, we'll get started. We'll call the meeting to order. What we'd like to do, we'll deal with our closed session matter first. Uh, look for a motion to rise and report from closed session that we had earlier this evening. Moved by Deputy Mayor Calver, seconded by Councillor uh, Nori. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed? Motion's carried. I'd like to report from closed session this evening that Council approved the closed session minutes of March 26th reviewed nominations for Senior of the Year, and received for information two reports regarding human resources matters and negotiations and gave directions to staff. Uh, having said that, we'll look for a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. And I, we just want to make a, a small amendment to this evening's agenda. I'd like to uh, deal with uh, six point, or sorry, 8.2 on our agenda first before dealing with 8.1. So we're just going to switch those two matters. So... I look for a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Moved by Councillor Shank, seconded by Councillor Hicks. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed? Motion's carried. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest and in the general nature thereof? And I believe uh, Councillor Pinnell, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, I'm declaring a conflict of interest on 8.3 as one of the applicants is my employer. Great. Thanks, uh, Councillor Pinnell. Um, moving on, we'll start into the deputations. Scheduled deputations with respect to new items, and I don't believe, Madam Clerk, we have any of those. Thank you. Uh, next up the, on the list is deputations items that are on the agenda, and we do have a registered deputation for, from a Tony Belisavich, and I hope I haven't um, made that too much of a mess there, Tony, so come on up. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been uh, and done a deputation with us before. I'll give you sort of the Reader's Digest version. Uh, you'll have to make sure you talk into the mic, and you'll have to push the button that says talk on the right-hand side and hold it as you talk. Um, if you don't, the people from home get really mad at me, and they send me nasty text messages. So um, just, just as you're talking, you hold the button, and then when you're done talking, just release it. So uh, welcome, and uh, the floor is yours. I would like to thank Council for the opportunity to be here this evening. My focus tonight will be on STAs because I believe the introduction of the proposed bylaw, when it does come in, will end up costing the town far more money than it will bring in and provide little or no meaningful benefit to taxpayers. Over the last few years, various municipalities have sought to establish licensing requirements for STAs. In the vast majority of cases, the motivation to bring in this type of regulation has been focused on addressing two pressing policy issues for very specific communities. In major population centers, it is being done as one of a series of measures aimed at maintaining or re-accessing long-term rental stock. While in tourist destinations, they have been put into place to support and manage the long-term development of the community. Outside of these policy issues, justification for licensing becomes less clear, but usually centers around the concept for a need to supervise regulation. This is done in a stated attempt to deal with nuisance issues, which for the most part is already covered under existing bylaws within the community. In these cases, STA bylaws have a dirty little secret. People support the idea of licensing the regulation because they think it will actually make a difference and stop nuisance issues from occurring, something municipal officials actively encourage as a way to build up support for the idea. Unfortunately, when these bylaws come in, municipalities are quick to collect the money, but attempt to get by with little or no enforcement. What, in, what enforcement is done usually comes from existing staff resources and is focused on education to bring the money in. What municipalities often do not realize is that when they have, they have simply traded one problem for a number of others. This is because financial estimates tend to use a formula based on the approximate number of STAs, the average cost to run the program, and the cost of fees, which together provide expected revenue totals. What is often missed in this equation is compliance rates. 
These normally run between only 5 to 20 percent of STA numbers for cities and towns, but tend to be higher in tourist destinations. Once these bylaws are in place, the problem for municipalities is that they still must deal with the concerns of residents, but pressure rapidly builds from compliant STA owners to crack down on non-compliant ones. Unfortunately, it is very easy to sidestep these regulations, so enforcing them becomes a full-time job and ends up costing far more money than was initially anticipated. The town staff report included in this study acknowledges this problem to some extent <clears throat> when it states, quote, any licensing program will require an investment in staff resources to manage and is unlikely to generate enough revenue to break even on costs. It goes on to say, even if the accommodation tax were to be applied to STAs, the 50% revenue retained by the municipality would not be sufficient to cover those costs. So what are the actual costs to the town would be if this were to be brought in? Could I see the slide? In August 2023, Kingston received an update on its licensing and um, regulation of, or on its licensing and regulation of short-term rentals. Council was told uh, it was costing the city almost three times as much to administer the program than it generated in revenues. In its first year, the program produced around 15,000 in fees. However, backlash from compliant owners, among other issues, forced added measures in the second year. This effort brought in an additional $10,000 for total revenues of $25,000, but unfortunately the city had to spend over $72,800 in order to administer the program. Why is enforcement so important? Because once a municipality brings in this type of bylaw but does not do the necessary enforcement, non-compliant owners operate at an unfair competitive advantage over compliant ones. And the only way to be fair to everyone is to make sure all players are in the program. This is particularly important to note because in this case, the proposed STA bylaw is embedded within the MAT study under the concern for fairness. According to the study's logic, imposing a tax on hotels and motels, but not on the small number of short-term rentals, which I have estimated between 23 and 46, managed primarily by homeowners would be unfair. Uh, unfair. So to make things right, the study proposes to force these homeowners to pay hundreds, even thousands of dollars each year in additional fees so that they can qualify to collect a few hundred dollars in MAT taxes for the town and thus create a level playing field for all. The assumption is that STAs are competing with hotels for the same tourist dollars and they would have an unfair advantage if the tax were not applied and collected from them as well a concept that is fundamentally flawed. First, unless homeowners are incorporated as a business, they are paying personal income tax on their earnings, which is set at a far higher rate than the corporate tax hotels and motels must pay on their profits. Secondly, numerous studies have concluded that STAs are not taking business away from hotels, but rather filling voids left by these established players. In fact, the evidence shows that STA listings have emerged to fill an accommodation gap for people who require lodging sufficient to meet needs over extended periods. This includes travel during the course of medical treatments, large family vacations, or for short-term contract work uh, for professionals such as medical and construction workers. In these cases, the opportunity to stay in an STA with a full kitchen, separate bathrooms, laundry facilities, and other household amenities represents services that hotels struggle to offer. In summary, this bylaw will end up costing the town more than expected revenues will bring in while providing little or no additional benefit to taxpayers um, that current bylaws better enforced would do. The question council should um, consider when looking at this bylaw is whether the problem with STAs in Greater Napanee is such that it would be worth the significant extra cost to taxpayers to bring in and enforce? And will it be the best use of staff time to constantly, continually monitor for non-compliant STAs? 
Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Tony. Just uh, hang tight, and we'll see if there's any questions of councils with respect to your uh, your presentation. Does anyone from council have any questions of Tony with respect to? Uh, go ahead, Councillor Pennell. Thank you, Worship. Through you, Tony. Thanks a lot for coming in tonight and speaking with us. Just a quick question: Do you have a STA yourself? So, full disclosure, I do not. Um, however, I have been in the rental business for the um, since 1989. Uh, I've owned properties in British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, and the Maritimes. I did own a STA up until about 2016. I sold uh, largely because the amount of administration it was taking uh, and the lack of profits I was making on it just didn't make it feasible for me to keep it. So the short answer is no, but I just wanted to add that yes. It was a no, but yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Councillor Pinnell. Is there any other questions of Tony before we... Uh, Go ahead, Councillor Hicks. Thank you, through you. <clears throat> Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Tony. Um, just a question. Uh, based on your prior history of owning an STA in various provinces, what was your experience? Like, if you can give me a short answer, like, is does BC have the regulation provincially, or did the municipality that you were in, the Maritimes? Yeah, so what you're seeing in terms of trends is that by and large, federal government has stayed out of it. They've just recently started to come into the picture, largely because of public uh, concern for the uh, issue. Uh, BC is leading the race in terms of STA regulations in Canada, largely driven by Vancouver. Um, the problem that you have there is that um, their primary focus is to drive STAs out of business which is one of the reasons why you see low um, compliance rates because essentially the bottom line is the city or the, the bottom line message the city is sending is, listen, we want you to register this program so that we can um, regulate you and keep adding fees until you're forced out of, uh, out of the uh, business so we can turn that in, hopefully into long-term rental stock. So there are um, different... Um, Provinces have different regulations and take different sort of levels of activeness uh, in those regulations. By and large, though, it is the municipalities that dominate the um, uh, decision on what they want to do, largely because they are very particular to local needs. So, for example, what would happen, what would be happening in um, the county um, where it has well over a thousand. STA units right now would be very different from what was happening here or what would be happening in Kingston. So it has to be a very localized approach for localized issues and problems. Uh, thanks, Councillor Hicks. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Shank. As long as that, uh, can we get a copy of your deputation if you could give it to the clerk so we could have that on file and then we could, you know, like all, to... yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, no problem. I'll send it tomorrow morning. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Councillor Shank. Uh, is there any other questions or comments? Um, seeing none. Thanks, Tony. Uh, and and just for the record, I think uh, I think Quebec, the province of Quebec, has, has instituted a um, Airbnb reg legislation as well at the provincial level. If just yeah, they have. So. Um, they had to totally rewrite the um, uh, regulations because they were getting less than a five percent compliant rate as of twenty nineteen. So, yeah, there was a, a significant uh, uh, change around in that area. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming. And we'll have, uh, we're going to have a further discussion later on this evening's meeting. So, thank you. Um, sorry, we'll look for a motion to note receive uh, Tony's uh, deputation with respect to the Airbnbs moved by Deputy Mayor Calver, seconded by Councillor Martin. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion? Opposed? Motion's carried. Um, we don't have any other registered deputations, but I think we have a young lady here that would like to uh, uh, address council. And ma'am, I just have to get a motion from council to to accept um, accept your deputation. So just sit down, just have a seat. No, come on up, have a seat. I don't think there's anybody here that's not going to let you talk. So we'll look uh, look for a motion for an unscheduled deputation. And I believe your name, ma'am, is Alice Carlson, and it's with respect to Airbnbs. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Left, left hand button. Uh, the button that says talk would be on the right hand side. Okay. 
Yeah. So uh, moved by Councillor Norrie, seconded by Deputy Mayor Calver. If there's no comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion, opposed, motion's carried. Ma'am, the floor is yours, so go ahead. And I'm just I just want to confirm your name is Alice Carlson? Yes. Great, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to offer my situation on a, as a specific example of a rural STA or SDR. Since about 2010, I have rented my family's Davern farmhouse on our bicentennial farm throughout the months May to December, during high season for six nights a week and during the shoulder season, May and June and September to December on weekends. During this time, I also offer the farmhouse to friends and family at a significantly reduced rate. My significant expenses include insurance, utilities, payment for my co-hosting agent, the purchase of bottled water in 18 liter jugs following provincial rules for houses on private wells and for garbage tags. Although in the past I've employed some others to help me clean, I've been without help for several years. Most of my rental earnings are applied to the ongoing maintenance of my over 160 year old house and to the upkeep of the gardens and grounds. Davern Farmhouse can accommodate up to 10 adults and several children using six bedrooms and three bathrooms, always uh, family or um, reunion groups. They're here for weddings, fishing, attending university or nursing reunions, cycling, quilting, and restaurant and winery visits. They spend their time and money as tourists in both LNA and Peace and Prince Edward County. Last July, um, we rented to six workers in Kingston uh, at a German company. They were workers from Latvia. Um, none of the behaviors over these 14 years has been problematic. And uh, so that's my example. Um, and I was not clear watching uh, the September meeting here about the difference between a proposed accommodation tax and licensing fees and how either would impact my rental because um, I don't know the specific amount of fees or tax. Because my profits are modest, extra taxes and fees will feature in my future decisions about continuing to rent the farmhouse. Thank you, uh, thank you Alice. If you just want to just hang tight and we'll see if we have any uh, questions from council with respect to your deputation. Is there any questions of Council of Alice uh, with respect to her deputation with respect to the Airbnb? Go ahead, Councilor Shank. I'll say this. What Allison, what Mrs. Allison, uh, Alice Carlson is saying is factual. We're neighbors, and at no time we ha I have ever had any problem with, mind you, Alice lives just across the road from the house too, but at no time has there ever been any, you know, any misuse or problems or that I know of ever. Great, thanks, Councillor Shank. Is there anything else? Seeing none, just a quick question, Alice. How much does it rent per day? I got to get you to use the button, sorry. I, it, it, no, that's okay. We, we all do it, and even we as councillors forget to push the button sometimes. So, no, go ahead, sorry. Uh, my weekly uh, rent in high season, the six nights, is uh, just around two thousand dollars. Great. And I do I rent uh, for six days because uh, because of the lack of uh, custodial help, I cannot clean the farmhouse in a four hour. So so we go uh, just go six. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you. Is there any other questions that came out of my questions? Seeing none. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, like I said, we're going to have a further discussion. Uh, I'm sure a more robust discussion with respect to Airbnbs and uh, um, MAT taxes uh, later. So you're more than welcome to stick around and, and listen if you wish. And if not, then uh, you can always watch it on TV tomorrow. So, Thanks very much. I appreciate this, the short notice, too, for being able to do this. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll look for a motion to note and receive. Madam Clerk, uh, the deputation of Alice Carlson with respect to Airbnbs. Moved by Councillor Shank, seconded by Councillor Hicks. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed, motion's carried. 
unfinished business. Uh, I don't believe we have any unfinished business, uh, Madam Clerk. Moving on to our administrative consent agenda. Uh, this is usually a, a fairly lengthy process, but bear with us. Uh, we'll start with the council minutes from the regular session of council uh, for March 26, 2024. Does anyone have any uh, comments or questions with respect to those minutes uh, with respect to um, March 26th? Seeing none, committee minutes with respect to the Arts Advisory Committee. Is there any comments or questions with respect to those committee minutes? The Recreation Advisory Committee. Is there any questions or comments with respect to those minutes? Seeing none, and the uh, Municipal Heritage Committees. Is there any comments or questions with respect to the minutes that are before us uh, this evening? And I see uh, Councillor Martin wants to speak being the chair of the uh, Harris Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the report pretty much speaks for itself for our last meeting, but I just wanted to uh, report to Council that we did have a resignation from our committee. Um, Victoria Maitland has resigned and she's moving out of the area. So uh, I just wanted to thank her for her contribution to our community and our committee. Uh, Victoria was actually co-chair of our Heritage Committee and uh, I just wanted to publicly thank her for her hard work and that capacity and her uh, dedication and knowledge of the community that has been most helpful in our committee. All wish her well with their new location uh, in another area. Greater Napanee will always miss you and we hope that you come back to visit Victoria if you're listening. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Councillor Martin. And I know, yes, uh, Victoria was on the Heritage Committee uh, the last term of council and I was, and she was an integral part of the Heritage Committee then. And uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you're gonna miss her on the committee. So congratulations, Victoria, and all the best uh, in your new ventures. So uh, next up is correspondence for information items dated April 9th, 2024. Is there anything that anyone wants to pull out of the, the correspondence for information with respect to uh, uh, that file. Yeah, I think uh, we do have uh, Councillor Hicks. I think you want something that's pulled out to speak to. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It was uh, regarding the um, accessibility, the the resolution that went to the province from Prince Edward County, and I do have some uh, appropriate wording here, thanks to Madam Clerk. Uh, so that uh, I'd like to propose that the Council of the Town of Greater Napanee supports the motion from the Council of Prince Edward County calling on the province to create a municipal accessibility fund and commit to working with municipalities to implement the immediate recommendations of the 2023 Legislative Review of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act in order to meet the deadline of an accessible Ontario by 2025. And further, that Council directed a letter of support be sent to the Minister of Seniors and Accessibility, the Premier of Ontario, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Great, thanks. Councillor Hirkson, you're gonna make that by way of motion. We'll look for a seconder, seconded by Deputy Mayor Calver. If there's no comments, questions or further uh, questions with respect to that, we'll call for the vote. All in favor of that motion? Opposed, motion's carried. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hicks. And I believe maybe Deputy Mayor Calvert, you had one as well that you wanted to uh, speak to. Yeah, through you, Your Worship. Uh, I'd also like to uh, send her a letter of support off uh, for the City of Brantford. Um, I'd like to make my motion that the Council of Greater Town and Apney supports the motion from the Council of the City of Brantford calling on the federal government to exclude home, he he home heating from federal carbon tax and calling on federal and provincial governments to uh, reinstate home energy retrofit rebate and grant programs. And further council direct a letter to, of support to be sent to federal minister of the environment and climate change and provincial minister of environment, conservation and parks and the MP and MPP for Hastings and Lennox Vatican County. Great, thank you Deputy Mayor Calvin. You're making that by way of motion. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Hicks. If there's no further comments, questions or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed, motion's carried. Uh, I don't believe there's any other items that need to be pulled out. Am I correct? Seeing none, 
Moving on, uh, Proclamation Fibromyalgia Awareness Day. Is there anyone who would like to speak to uh, that uh, proclamation this evening? Seeing none, um, the 2024 Outdoor Patio License, the Loaf and Ale at 25 Dundas Street East. Is, uh, is there anyone that wants to pull that out and have a conversation about that? Seeing none, I'll just uh, comment, Madam Clerk, That's uh, we do that on uh, a yearly basis and there's been no changes from the previous years to this year, am I correct? Through your worship, yes, that's correct. Okay, great, thank you. And that would be the, uh, the, the end of the consent agenda, so we'll look for uh, a motion that council consent to the approval of the following routine items, the minutes of the regular session of council dated March 26, 2024 be adopted as presented. The draft Arts Advisory, Recreation Advisory, and Municipal Heritage Committee minutes of February 29th, March 21st, 2024 be received for information. The correspondence for information items dated April 9th, 2024 be received. That council receive for information the Fibromyalgia Awareness Day Proclamation. And that council receive for information the 2024 Outdoor Patio License Loaf and Ale at 25 Dundas Street Report. And further, that council approve the Outdoor Patio License for the Loaf and Ale from May 1st to September 30th, 2024 for the patio on the sidewalk in front of 25 Dundas Street East with the exemptions to Section 4A, C, and D of the Outdoor Patio Bylaw, number 0438, subject to a number of conditions that are uh, contained within the agenda. Moved by Councillor Pinnell, seconded by Councillor Nori. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favour of that motion. Opposed? Motion's carried. Moving on to items for discussion, and this is where we're going to uh, do a bit of a T tweak. We'll start with the uh, short-term accommodations 8.2. And Madam Clerk, are you going to speak to that first? Through your worship, um, I believe the report speaks for itself, but staff are available for answers to any questions. I will note that staff have not made any specific recommendation with respect to next steps. So we will be looking for council direction as to where we go from here. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, does anybody want to start? Uh, I'll go to uh, Councillor Hicks, then we'll go to uh, Councillor Pinnell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Pinnell. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Clerk, I just have, um, Questions for council consideration. So the, you, ask, you have asked the question or staff has asked the question, if STAs are causing a negative impact in the community, and I would first of all like to acknowledge that there are STAs like Ms. Carlson's that are operated with the family living close by or the owner, there's no issues. However, I personally know of some that cause a great deal of uh, negative impact in, in the immediate community and even down the road, if you will. So the question becomes, how, do, how are we going to address the ones that are causing the problem? The next question is, are there public safety issues occurring due to the growth of unregulated STAs? So I went back and reread details of the fire in Montreal which is just beyond comprehension, the number of deaths in an unregulated, unlicensed STA. And one of the first things that I, I brought forward when I asked about the STAs was, how do we ensure the safety of the people that are staying in these places? How do we ensure that they don't have three bedrooms in the basement with no egress windows? And legally, what is the responsibility of the municipality should a fire occur? What, what, is, what responsibility do we have? So a hotel has to be inspected, fire ex extinguishers, stairwells, the emergency exit doors all work. This, all of these sorts of things happen in a hotel motel setting, but not necessarily in a private home. So that, that is one of my concerns. Um, interesting to Tony's point, 
with the benefits financially? I don't know. These, these are all questions I don't think we're going to come. Personally, I don't think we're going to come to a yes or no decision tonight on yes, we're implementing or imposing something. But I think we all need to think very carefully. If, if not, go back and reread those articles in the Montreal Gazette because, boy, it's an eye-opener. I mean, the number of people, I believe it was 16 people died in that fire. And to have someone wide awake and not able to exit the building and calling her father and the fire department to come and get her out, like, and she died. So would it happen in Apney? Maybe not. Could it happen in Apney? Maybe. So this that that's, a, a I think, a viable concern legally and morally. Great. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hicks. Uh, I think, Councillor Padon, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. I kind of wish I went first now, but uh, you stole my thunder with the, the egress. One of the reasons why I would like to have the short-term accommodations uh, regulated so we know where they are, so that there can be fire inspections done. In my, in my professional career of being a realtor, I see many times in a basement, someone wishes to call a room a bedroom that does not have a window. Or if it does have a window, it's too small to provide egress. Or the window is too high and there's nothing around to, to be able to get yourself up there. I do believe the, uh, the window needs to be a, a, an area of 3.8 square feet. And if there's a window well, then the window well needs to be at least 30 inches away from the foundation so you can squeeze through there. This is all coming out because if you can imagine somebody staying in your downstairs bedroom for the first time ever, and they don't know the lay of the, of, of the house, there's a fire, it's black, it's two o'clock in the morning, how did they get out? So going on with what Councillor Hicks has said, this is very important that we need to do this. Now, listening to the deputations tonight, it is going to be a rabbit hole going down of making sure that everybody's in compliance. That we don't have quite figured out yet. Also, again, it was mentioned in the uh, deputations about, uh, about compliance. But I think that we owe a duty to the existing property owners on either side of these short-term accommodations to provide them with quiet enjoyment of their homes as well. And I know that we have a bylaw for that, but we hire out our bylaw and we would need to possibly have more enforcement, if you will, more, more time on the clock, if you will. So. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. That's my two concerns about uh, short-term accommodations and, and why I think that uh, we should regulate them. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Pennell. Is there anyone else who would like to weigh in prior to me weighing in? Go ahead, Councillor Martin. I actually agree with both councillors on the other side of, as far as being compliant and safe. Um, my concern has always been the uh, small operator who has one apartment in his basement or is in his house and the compliance is burdensome on that person. Some of them use it to help pay their mortgage. Some of them use it to offset expenses, whatever they use it for. Um, the safety aspect though, Councillor Pinnell is absolutely correct. That That's a big worry. Um, I, I, I'm also concerned about the staff time that's going to be involved or, or what we're going to have to do. We, we may have to hire another bylaw officer just because of this um, situation. And, and that's something we have to think about as well. So um, Councillor Hicks is correct. I, I would hope we don't decide on anything tonight because I need more information on this to make an informed decision. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Martin. Is there um, any other comments or questions before I do? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Shank. So after reviewing uh, all the documentations and everything that we have currently, that we have in front of us, 
uh, the, the two options, because the options that staff have given us is the direct staff to conduct an additional investigation, determine the most appropriate licensing system for Greater Napanee, given the issues and challenges reported in the community. But I'd like to tie in also number three. I'd like to have one and three done, direct staff to develop an enforcement plan for, for specific priorities outside of licensing framework. Everybody understands that we have our excellent operators, like this is Carlson, but then we have some operators that is just a free and we have nothing but problems with the neighbors. We have retired people that live right beside these other, uh, 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 Shoreline Residential and other places that are, uh, are rented out and it's just a party fiasco for the whole weekend and the neighbors are, do, do not have the lifestyle that they have. So we have some serious problems that we're going to have to deal with. But if there's only, like, in all the complaints that I've written here and the overburden of groundwater and the noise complaints and everything else that you've already put into your thing, we have to look at other ways that maybe we can solve the problem or if it's, if it is a licensing, how do you, I hate to make a bylaw that we can't enforce, all right? So there's no sense if we have to go if we're going to go down a, a a bylaw road, we have to be able to enforce it, and we have to be able to, you know, not that's going to cost us to the point where why did we ever go down this road? So what else can we possibly do without kicking it down the road for another three years? All right, that we get this dealt with this problem that because we're going to be going into our summer season and the problems that you've had in your neck of the woods. All right, and especially the garbage where they go ahead and take the garbage after they've had it all week and it was missed that day, then they move it and put it in somebody else's. There's been a lot of problems that we've had, but all I'm saying is we have to come up with a solution that if there's a few that are really bad, how can we nail those without impacting everybody? Or is there a licensing way that we can do it? Or is there, I just don't have enough information to say this way or that way should be the appropriate way to do it. But something has to be done, but if we put a bylaw and we can't enforce the bylaw, and then you have fire related problems, you have there's a there's a lot of ways of going ahead with the licensing now the tile beds and and what, how much there's a lot of work that's that's going to be entailed. And I think the last report, and I'm not sure we even have a fee yet of what the license fee was, but the break even point, correct me if I'm wrong, was around fourteen hundred dollars. Now, maybe that's wrong, but I thought over there was a report of break, just to break even, just a cost recovery would be $1,400 for licensing. So there's a lot of things that we still have to find out what we can do and what we can't do and what's the best plan of attack here. And I think um, I, I think staff will come back with a, uh, a more robust idea what the uh, fees and stuff are. Um, we, I think we do what, what we need to keep in mind is, is that... <laughs> Any type of enforcement is never cost recovery. Policing is never cost recovery. Bylaws never cost recovery. But we do have an onus to our landowners, to our homeowners, to try and regulate and control the activities that are going on. And and uh, and Alice, you should be commended for running the one the way you should be running. Unfortunately, we do, we don't create bylaws. We don't create uh, um, laws for the good people. We create the laws and the bylaws for the people that are, are don't care, and that's unfortunately the ones that we have to. So um, I, I would hope that if we come up and, and that's, if that's the direction the council is going, that we come up with a way to regulate and 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 uh, control these STAs that we never have to use it. In a perfect world, we would never have to use it. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're living in a perfect world. So um, just from the number of calls and and, and the, uh, the indication that uh, that I'm getting. Uh, and and just and I know we've we've probably bantered it around, but we just have to keep in mind as well that we have a substantial amount of waterfront property in our municipality, and on those waterfront properties, there's a lot of privately owned roads. That when people live on those privately owned roads, everybody pitches in because we all live there. We all want to be able to get out. We all want to make sure that uh, if a fire truck or an ambulance is required, they can get in. Unfortunately, there are some cases where um, landowners that don't live in the area, don't live on the road, don't care about the road. 
and those costs are being downloaded on the people that are actually living there. So I'm not sure if uh, uh, if we do look at this and that's the direction that we're going, if there's some um, mechanism to uh, to help those folks that that own property on privately owned roads that are are dependent and 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 have to maintain those privately owned roads to to make sure that everybody pays their fair share but that's something further down the road but i just want to bring it up because we do have an awful lot of cases uh, in our municipality be it right be it wrong uh, we do have a lot of uh, privately owned roads uh, that lead to uh, some magnificent places along the water so Sorry, I probably went on far too long, but uh, was there any other comments or questions with respect to uh, for this matter? <laughs> Councilor Hicks. So thank you, Your Honor. Um, this question is directed to staff, probably primarily Jessica, I guess, maybe Brant, possibly Michael. <laughs> um, if mandatory licensing and this is an if question. If mandatory licensing was not brought in, but a general call to all of the operators in the area to voluntarily come forward for so that they could boast on their advertising that we've been inspected by the fire department, we have operating I stayed at an Airbnb in Thunder Bay. If they dealt fire in the middle of the night, I wouldn't have had the first clue. I didn't even know where the landline was. I Fire extinguishers, I don't think I saw one when I was there. Um, so if we asked the yeah. operators to come forward voluntarily to be listed within the town as a goodwill gesture, no, we're not going to impose, this is an if statement, Keep in mind, we're not going to impose a fee, but we're asking you to come forward so that we can all make sure that everyone is operating safely for the benefit of your guests, for the benefit of, of the town. Um, is this something that, that could possibly be done and an inspection carried out? So I, I understand that there's a cost involved in that with the fire department, but it's not unheard of them to do inspections. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, to ensure working smoke and CO alarms, et cetera, et cetera. Is this a possibility? Can, can we legally ask? I know Carlson probably, I'm putting words in your mouth, but you probably would not object to that. You might even say, yeah, sure, come on, Gail, make sure I'm, I'm legal and it's only going to benefit me as an operator because now the insurance, et cetera. I, it's just a yeah. question. And I think that's probably part and parcel. I think, Madam Clerk, you want to weigh in there, uh, Jess? So through your worship, this would need conversation with the fire department as to what the impact on their resources would be. The fees and charges bylaw currently has a fee of $100 for an inspection and report for residential daycares, group homes, and special care facilities. Um, so that is something that would need to be taken into consideration. Um, Beyond that, as I said, I don't want to speak for the fire department as to what impact operationally that would have on them, but I don't believe there's any reason we couldn't at least investigate that and what that could look like. Deputy Mayor Gower. I'm just looking at some past uh, things here, like in March uh, 22nd, 2022, um, initial community survey response indicated very low levels of concern about operation of STAs within the community. And then on June 14th, uh, staff calculated that based on the number of reported STAs, approximately 60, the workload requirement to implement a licensing system with inspections would be about 900 hours roughly 15 hours per property based on inspections from the fire and building staff and drive time and documentation review. Um, just wondering what, you know, what kind of fee we were looking at to cover all that loss. Is that a question? Go ahead, uh, Jess. Sorry, uh, through your worship, at, at the time that that staff report was brought forward, staff did acknowledge that 
it was unlikely that we would ever reach cost recovery through a fee for that. So it was the discussion was, did council want to invest in significantly more enforcement resources uh, at that point in time, the direction from council was not to proceed based on the uh, projected costs. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. And again, I think we do have to keep in mind that uh, there isn't an enforcement or a regulating body out there that's going to be cost recovery, but uh, at what cost do we owe it to our taxpayers to ensure that uh, the neighborhoods that they moved into are the neighborhoods that they are currently living in now? So um, mm -hmm. is there any other comments or questions? Go ahead, Councillor Shank. The only one is we have a few that we know that are really bad, but Jessica's done a really good job of compiling all the information she's gathered so far, but noise was the number one complaint. But it also states under here, it says that, however, some of the complaints were received not rise to the level of being enforceable under any bylaw as they fall within the threshold of a reasonable enjoyment of private property. But I'm just trying to think of, we have to come up with a way because if it was my grandma or grandpa that lived in the house and retired and then somebody <laughs> bought a house here and it was just renting it out for SDAs and it was just a party house and now it's affecting the lifestyle. So I totally understand what the mayor is saying. We have to do something to protect them, but what is that fine line because of the, the ones that are the bad apples? How can we penalize them without penalizing the good ones? So where's that, what can we come up with or what can we do to hammer those ones that are, are, are really abusing it, you know? And, and I think that's part of the, uh, part and parcel to the, uh, the regulating and the enforcement of it. Um, I, I guess it would be providing staff with more tools in the toolbox. And I, I hate to use that term, but uh, I know that's a term that we used in policing is, is that we provide our staff all the tools in the toolbox in order to um, resolve an issue that, that could happen. And like I say, in a perfect world, we would never have to use it. We would have a, a, regulation, a regulating process that, we, that identifies where the STAs are. There would never ever be any type of uh, enforcement there because everybody acts like Alice and, and, and takes care of the place and doesn't, uh, uh, aren't, aren't absentee landowners. So, um, but we know that, that we're not living in a perfect world. And, and then we, I think we've all received the phone calls on it. So go ahead, Mike. Now, Jessica, this, these are, I'm just throwing some ideas around here, Brett, is that if, could we not put a bylaw in place that if, a noise complaint or a complaint that's verifiable that <clears throat> to an STA and it's deemed to be an STA, all right, like it was rented out to somebody and they'd, you know, and we could prove that it was rented out to somebody else. Could we not impose a fine without making, uh, is there any way we could do a bylaw that way that we're hammering the ones that are abusing it? You know, I, I know when it comes to a burn complaint, if you get a burn complaint there and they ask you about the third time you've gone to to that area because there's some people that ha have an SDA but the neighbor didn't, don't, don't uh, hate having anybody new renting the house and then they'd phone the complainant. That's, I've seen happen numerous times and it was just the neighbor that was doing it, but there's a, a where the fire chief could actually go ahead and find the person that's putting in the complaint. But I was just trying to think, how could we reverse that, that if there was the problem with that, with the noise, which is the number one thing, that we could just find that individual without making it really deeper. I'm just coming up with different ideas here. I, I think, and all that, Madam Clerk, maybe Madam Clerk would like to respond before I do, but go ahead to ask Jess. Through your worship, we would need to get legal advice on this matter. There are a few municipalities who are exploring a call-out fee for repeat bylaw services to the same property for the same issue. Um, but we would, we would want legal advice before trying to implement something like that just to make sure that we were doing it fully within our um, 
authority and also to make sure that there are protections in place for the false alarm calls or malicious calls um, where a neighbor simply doesn't like what is happening, but it's not actually rising to the threshold of being a bylaw violation. Yeah, and I, I think we just be cautious uh, not to focus on the on on one aspect of of the whole regulation part of it. There's, is that there are many many aspects of, of regulation part of of which are identifying which are and which aren't. So um, it, I think it's one of those things that we're either all in or all out. And uh, I don't know if there's any kind of a hybrid process that would it would work because we're trying to do a hybrid process now, which you with which is using existing bylaws to deal with a problem that existing bylaws on the surface, yeah, so we, we, we can charge somebody with a noise bylaw, but that doesn't uh, um, stop the problem. It, it just, uh, it's a Band-Aid solution, so. Um, is there any other comments before we entertain a motion? Go ahead, Mike. Just uh, so the next meeting, if you could come over, then when, when we're discussing this again, if we could have a fee schedule of basically what your, your what it would be proposing of what, if we were going down that row of licensing, what the fee schedule will be, just more information that we could, you know, ponder, you know, if that's the first year, the first time, what would that fee schedule be? And the, if it would be every year or every third year, like what are they doing elsewhere? What are they doing in Prince Edward County? You know, I'd just like to see about, just have more information what we can, what we can do and what we can't do. And I think that's, uh, I think that's what, if if we go down that road, that's what the intent is. I do have uh, a, a couple of options with respect to uh, a motion if you want me to relate them. What, what I'm hearing is is that, that we probably should regulate them, but one of the options are is that council receive for information the short-term accommodations report and further that council direct staff to continue to investigate and consult with the community regarding a potential licensing bylaw and report back with recommendations regarding a potential licensing framework, including revenue and expense forecasting. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? If not, I can go down the list. There's also a, an option that council receive for information, uh, STA report, Further, that council directs staff to continue monitoring and tracking inquiries and concerns related to short-term accommodations, but no licensing system be implemented at this time. Or that uh, receive for information and further that council directs staff to continue monitoring and tracking inquiries and concerns related to short-term accommodations, but that no licensing system be implemented at this time. And further, that council directs staff to report back regarding an enhanced enforcement plan, which is kind of what we sort of already done and are still here. So um, I think we've started this conversation back in 2019 with Councillor Nori suggesting that uh, maybe we should just look at somebody else's and, and see if we can cut and paste and take a look at it, which I thought was a marvelous idea, to be quite honest with you, because I don't think we need to re rebuild the wheel or reinvent the wheel, but uh, that's just my opinion. So anyways, we do have a few options here. So council or uh, staff will be looking for some form of direction with respect to uh, this evening's conversation on short term accommodations. Sorry, uh, point go, ahead, is, go ahead, Council Chang. So the point is, is you've been, we, you've been doing this since 2019. You've been kicking this down the road. All right, well, five years later, so all I'm saying is, is I, I'll agree with your motion, Mr. Mayor, that uh, that we continue to investigate it. Uh, we're just getting more factual information. What will work, what won't work. We'll have to tweak things. Some things we might not have to tweak, but at least we can, uh, let's get put this thing to bed, either you're going to do or not. Because if we just go ahead and bury it and it comes back, but it's, you have to be fair for all parties. It's not always the, the great ones that are great, but the ones that are, are being bad and the neighbors beside them, they have some serious problems and they have to be addressed. So if we just bury it, you know, yeah, the people are doing great, but the person that happens to be living beside something like that is going, you're not looking after us. So let's look into it, find out what we can do, what are the facts are. Tony had given some pretty good, uh, you know, what we could do, what we can't do there. So, and the same thing with Alice. So we need more of that and see what we can come to as a conclusion. Uh, thanks, Councilor Shank. So, uh that council receive for information the short-term accommodations report and further council direct staff to continue to investigate and consult with the community regarding a potential licensing bylaw report back with recommendations regarding a potential licensing framework 
including revenue and expense forecasting. And I'm thinking that, uh, Madam Clerk, and I think we may have even saw it, but uh, we see some form of a uh, um, fee chart situation. Um, I think that there's probably already been a lot of work done on this, right? Through your worship, there has been work done on this. Uh, staff will need to revisit the numbers. Uh, as noted in the report, those original numbers reported in 2022 were based on an assumption um, that council wanted to see a fairly aggressive enforcement approach. Um, staff can look at a few different options, including uh, ones proposed tonight around uh, possibly voluntary listings or having a listing of uh, operators that do voluntary inspections for code compliance, um, which may possibly cost everyone a lot less money. We, we can investigate more options and report back. Uh, thanks, Madam Clerk. I, ju I just, again, uh, to, uh, to reiterate what uh, Councillor Shank says, I, I just don't want to kick this thing down the road anymore. If uh, we're going to institute a, a, a regulatory body to do deal with this, I would like to uh, see some form of um, documentation with respect to what that would look like, I guess is the best way of putting it, so that we can uh, take a look at it and, and, and move forward from it. Because like I say, I know um, I, I feel a little bad when I'm talking to people that I talked to back in 2019 saying, well, we haven't got any type of regulatory body, but we're working on it and we'll get there. And now we're five years down the road and we're still looking at it, so. Yeah, go ahead, Jess. Through your worship, if I may, if there are residents contacting members of council with concerns, please have them entered in our access E11 or email to the bylaw officer or myself because we are not getting those complaints to the office. They may be ringing your phones off the hook, but we aren't getting them. So that does skew potentially the information that we are presenting to you. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. And uh, I'm a big proponent of the E11 system. And, uh, but I guess it, it's one of those things that, I mean, we, we had an open house on this. And we got what, 22 people out of 16,000. So it, it's, it, it's not a really good indication as to what people are thinking, right? So um, that's the difficult part to it. So um, in any event, we will continue to use the E11 system and uh, um, gather as much information. But I'd like to see some form of, of what is this bylaw and regulatory body going to look like uh, so we can make some, some decisions uh, sooner than later, I guess. Councillor Hicks. To you, Your Worship. So, Jessica, I agree with what the mayor has said, but I also am wondering if at the same time uh, you can show us what an enforcement plan would look like for specific issues, i.e. noise, burning, like do the, did they call in for a fire permit? Um, again, can can the call out be call out fees? Is, is there a possibility of doing that? Like dear homeowner, <laughs> we've been called out to your place no less than 12 times in the, in the past 15 days and here's your bill and it's going on your taxes. <laughs> this, this like, is there a possibility of that? And I'm really interested to know um, what, what comes out of um, what are our legal responsibilities as a municipality? Because if you are operating a business and taking money for it, and I understand like you're, you're filing your income taxes and all the rest of it, and you have homeowner's insurance, but is your insurance company fully aware that you're booking people in? Like it's a revolving door. Do they know that? Like, and, and again, what is our responsibility? Hotels and motels have to follow. And I understand that this, this is filling a gap as, as Tony mentioned in his deputation, but there's, it's, it's a fine line. If you license it, but at what expense do you license it? Because what I'm getting, what I'm reading and what I'm hearing is that the cost of the licensing, we're no, we're going to spend twice as much in, if we put a bylaw in place 
we have to be, as a corporation, fully prepared to follow that bylaw to the letter and enforce it. And if that means two additional full-time bylaw enforcement officers responding to calls at all hours of the day and night for six months of the year, th is, is there... There, there's not enough revenue coming in to offset that. So then it's coming out of the general tax base. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, again, I just, uh, coming, coming, from, coming from an enforcement angle on this is that we don't need to have somebody working 24 hours a day. The police get called. They go, they find out it's an Airbnb. There's a huge party on there. There's a big uh, pit fire. Uh, people are drinking, carrying on the music. They're going to do a report. They're going to report it back to us and say, listen, this is what we saw. This is uh, this was who is in charge of it because they're going to take the name of the person that was actually in charge of the house at the time uh, and they'll sort forward that information to us. So there's no real reason or, or, or we don't need to have somebody on call to get called out as far as bylaw to go and do that, right? Police are going to get called. So they're going to call the office. Nobody's going to answer the phone. They're going to call the OPP. The OPP is going to go and say, listen, Hey, you can't be doing this. Who owns the house? Well, we're renting it. It's an Airbnb. If we regulate it, that information will all be in our files. And, and if it's been registered properly, we will know who the owner is. If it isn't, and we get the information that it's an Airbnb and they're having a big party there, we'll also know that because the OPP will take the information. We know who's on the tax roll. It's an investigation that, that we don't have to actually go and see. We can take the information from the OPP who have actually are the ones that are going to be working 24 hours and go and, and, and um, obtain the information. They're going to want to clear it as well, as well as anyone else. They're going to put in the report. They're going to forward it to the uh, town because they've got a Airbnb regulation and bylaw, and they'll put it into our people to do the investigation. So um, just to give you some form of idea as to how it probably will unroll, um, and then it would be the same with uh, pretty much everything else with respect to if it's septic, if it's whatever, racing on the road or whatever. So um, the OPP will take the information. They may not lay the charges, but they'll forward the information to us so we can lay the charges. At least that would be the way it would work in a perfect world. So go ahead, uh, Mike. Jessica, if you could uh, find out also, as soon as you, if you go down the licensing road, <clears throat> what's our liability? Because as soon as you license, uh, 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 you know, an SDA, and something, something totally happens that's beyond our control, beyond their control, the the town would automatic. I would assume the town would automatically be named in the suit also. So all I'm saying is, I just wanted to find out, like, what's our liability? Having all the facts, like, what's our liability when you start down this licensing road? If that's the process that we're going to go. So, so, through your worship, Councillor Hicks, were you making a motion earlier, or no? Just sorry. I think I think we started. If yeah, we better get back to to the rules here. I think uh, Councillor Shank was asking about option number one, which is the one I read. Yeah, I, did Councillor Shank wish to make that by way of motion? And I can read it again if it's helpful. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, is that the one I've got? No, it's a mashup of the two. Okay, the option, I'll, I'll read the option I have again. And it is Okay, well, I'll let Councillor Shank make his decision as to uh, which one you want to do, but Madam Clerk, go ahead, and uh, um, we'll so, see if we can put a motion on the floor and make a vote on it. Right through your worship, um, based on the, Additional comments made to combine options one and three. Um, I believe the motion would be council received for information in the report. Further, council directs staff to continue to investigate and consult with the community regarding a potential licensing bylaw and report back with options and detailed information regarding a potential licensing framework, including revenue and expense forecasting, as well as report back on alternate enforcement options for specific issues. Is that? Yeah.
Yeah, I think I heard that about three years ago. So, but we have, do have a motion on the floor. Or do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Deputy Mayor Calver. Um, is there any further comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion's carried. Moving on to 8.1. Um, municipal accommodation tax. So Madam Clerk. Through your worship, once again, I believe the information is in the report. There is no specific recommendation from staff, so we are looking for direction from council tonight. Who wants to start? Councillor Pinnell. Uh, thank you, Worship, through you. Um, this one I'm not in favor of. Um, we, we seem to be getting a lot of taxes lately. We just got this beautiful carbon tax put onto us. I don't think that we need to be taxing people to come and visit our town. I know I'm going to hear an argument about this from others to say that our neighbours are doing it. I'm not concerned about the neighbours. I'm concerned about Napanee. So I would like, uh, I'd like not to have the municipal tax put on at this time. But what I'd like to do is slow down and, and make, a, um, make a tourism committee and have, have them look more into this and see what they say. But again, I'm, I'm not a fan of just doing something because somebody else is doing it. Um, that's all I got to say at this particular time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Pinnell, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not in favor of the mat tax at this time either. Um, I got a lot of questions about it. I mean, is it a net positive for the community? Because, again, I'm concerned that the businesses have an advantage if we don't have the tax. And I don't want to put any undue encumbrances on that. Um, the other question I have, we had the other discussion about the uh, STAs. Are we putting the mat tax on them? Or are we only putting it on hotels, motels? Um, and as far as neighbors charging it, they don't. Because uh, if we were to put it on, we'd be the only municipality in the county to have the mat tax. Loyalist doesn't have it. Stone Mills doesn't have it. Hastings doesn't have it. So... I, I'm not I'm not saying we shouldn't have it because of that, but I don't want it said that everybody around us does because they don't. Um, I would just, again, I'd like to have a little more study on this. I wouldn't even mind if we had another open house um, to let the public weigh in on this. We didn't have any um, of the hotel owners weigh in at the open house. That was one thing that was missing at the open house. Um, we did have a lot of people uh, give their uh, opinions out there. And I wouldn't mind having another one just just, just to uh, let the, the community weigh in on this, knowing full well that there is an open house. Uh, every time we have an open house, it kind of informs others that they missed it. So it would just give them another opportunity. So thank you, Mayor. That's Thank you, uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to weigh in? Councillor Hicks. Through you, Your Worship. The mat. So the municipal accommodation tax. You cannot compare Napanee to Stone Mills or Loyalist. And I say that honestly, Councillor Martin, because neither one of them to the best of my knowledge, have a hotel or motel in them. I don't believe Stone Mills has a chain or even a privately run hotel or motel, or, or, or nor does Loyalist. I can't speak to Hastings. I do know that Kingston does charge the mat, and I do know uh, that Toronto... I saw a listing, and of I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mayor, there's 25 municipalities listed of comparable size all over Ontario, and Napanee was the only one. There was one other, Arnprior, I believe, 
that weren't currently charging a, a 4% municipal accommodation tax. Now I read, and I, I apologize because I did not circle it on my hard copy, but I read in the comments to the survey that there's nothing marketable about Napanee that there's nothing to do in Napanee. People don't come to Napanee to do anything uh, there's not, because there's nothing to do and people don't feel safe in Napanee and they prefer to stay elsewhere. Having the monies generated, even at 50% to start with, stay in the municipality could maybe go towards changing that because that money could be earmarked through a process of discussion and it's, it's council's decision basically on, on where that money goes. To, to my way of thinking, it would go towards marketing and possibly even one event a year where we don't currently have the budget for that. So this is a revenue stream that is currently not being used to bring in additional monies. Whether or not short-term accommodation is taxed at the same time, but the hotel chains didn't even show up at that meeting because it's already built into their software. The smaller hotel or smaller motels that showed up to the public meeting, um, many of them do long-term rentals. They're part of the housing program, if I'm not mistaken, and I think probably Brandt or even the mayor can confirm that from a county perspective. And they don't charge. They would not be charging that. Anything over 31 days is not charged. Anything over 31 days is not charged, the municipal accommodation tax. I am in favor of it because I think even if it turned out to be $40,000 a year, it's $40,000 that we don't currently have that could be spent on planning an event or fixing up the signage on the 401, which I agree is deplorable and coming into Napanee. Um, actually, there's a lack of signage everywhere in this municipality, but that's a subject for another day. Um, so yes, I am in favor. Great, uh, Councillor Hicks. I'll go to Deputy Mayor Cowan and then I'll go to Councillor Nori. At this point in time, I'm, I'm not in favor of it. You know, sure, we're going to collect $45,000, and, and I agree that's money we could be using for quite a few different things in the municipality. But what is the, what is the cost of collecting that? What is our, our outlay and cost of collecting it? And, and what's the cost of, of monitoring it? That's going to be my question. I think Councillor Hicks could probably answer that. Can you, Councillor Hicks? Well, I can't answer it, uh, Your Worship, but I'm sure that I could look over at the treasurer. Sorry, Alan, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but the hotels already have it built in. Usually it's collected and remitted quarterly, from my understanding of talking to other municipalities. Um, it's basically a line item in your ledger that says hotel XYZ remitted $5,425 in the month of April which was their, their first quarter remittance, um, and Hotel ABC remitted theirs, et cetera. So correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's that difficult to accept money. Ellen, did, given. did you wish to weigh in on it? Yeah, sure, thank you, through your worship. Um, so just to make a comment on that, um, you are correct in that the administration of this program is substantially less um, in comparison to, say, the STA program. Um, they are required to remit quarterly to the municipality. Uh, again, it will depend on the number in which that are reporting. So if it is just the existing hotels and motels, the staff requirement would be far lower than if we were to also include the potential of licensed STAs that would also be required to remit um, quarterly to us. There is a contingency in the MAT revenue that you can have 10% of that um, to offset your administrative costs, and we do believe that we likely can fall within that um, to cover our costs internally. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks, uh, Alan. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Calvert. Councillor Nori. Um, the theory I like, it's just that these times, and they say, yes, people that are going to be taxed are the ones that are traveling here, not ones that live here but it's still the same Canadian citizens or citizens that are being taxed to death. And unfortunately, they call it a tax. I wish they called it a fee or something, maybe more 
plausible. But at this time, with all the taxes we're being hit with and watching this show that's going on right now federally, I just can't say yes to any more tax. I'm sorry. As much as I'd like the money, I just the poor people are just getting... I won't say the other word. Sorry. Uh, thanks, Councillor Nori. Uh 4%? Is that what the... Uh, uh, that's... that's the average is 4%. My understanding is that Kingston is looking to increase theirs to 5%. Um, but that seems uh, a little high for, for Napanee. In my opinion, for Napanee, I would think starting at 4% would be more than sufficient. And these would be on rentals from people from outside the municipality. So say if somebody come and spent $600 a night on an STA, they would have to pay 4%, am I correct? So just uh, if I may, and I'll look to Madam Clerk for clarification on this, but the only way we could collect from an STA is if we knew that the STA was an STA and that they were licensed and regulated, um, and that's where the collection of the money be can, can become Onerous. Now, I am aware of a municipality where when they implemented the MAT, um, people just showed up with the check in hand, believe it or not, and said, Here, here's your remittance. There was no chasing required. So, uh, yeah, it's... And I, and I apologize, I shouldn't have used the STA as an example, but uh, somebody comes to the and and, and um, rents a room at one of our marvelous places that we have here, and it's a $200 bill. We're talking eight bucks on a $200 bill. Um, that is correct. Okay, that's just so I can get it clear in my mind. So thanks, Madam Clerk, go ahead. Through your worship, I did just wanna note that there is not necessarily a requirement to license STAs in order to collect the accommodation tax on them. We are aware that Brockville and Cornwall do not license short-term accommodations, but they do include them in their accommodation tax by law. We haven't spoken to their staff to see how that works, but Airbnb on their website um, has that tax automatically applied on the listings within those municipalities. They're also bigger than us, but we don't know that we would uh, meet the threshold for Airbnb to do a municipal partnership with our municipality. Um, just wanted to note that there are many different options of how this could work out. Great, thanks, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councillor Pennell, then I'll go to Councillor Shank. Uh, thank you, Worship, through you. I just wanted to clear up something throughout the conversation uh, when we were comparing when we we're comparing ourselves to our neighbors. I just want to point out Hastings is Belleville, right? So yes, they do have the mat tax there. And also, I, um, you know, this this tax thing, it's it's like the the chicken and the egg. You know, it's like does does the tourism come first or the tourism tax come first? You know, um, so again, I, I think that uh, we're in a position where where we should be looking at a tourism committee, and um, and then we can go with their recommendations and see what the community can handle. But I, again. With everything else that's going on right now, even though Mr. Mary pointed out it's eight dollars on a two hundred dollar bill, it's still a tax. Thank you, uh, Councilor Pennell. Councilor Shank. Just so I understand this correctly, so everybody on council just passed a motion that we could go ahead and investigate the STAs, all right, and the possibly as you know, if there's going to be a tax on that, all right, but. And then we have a contingent also. They're saying no way on uh, a corporate identity of any hotel tax to do it. Now, the ones that are the STAs, they're municipal owners. They pay taxes on their property more so than probably per square footage than somebody as, as a corporate identity. So how would that be fair if I was a short-term accommodation and you're going to hammer me and you're going to make me license, but you're not going to hit... Uh, a corporate identity, all right, for the eight or the four percent, and they charge the HST on that also. So I would put if I was a short term accommodation owner, I would have a uh, I'd, that'd be a little bit of a salt pill for me to swallow. If you're not going to do one, you sure the heck can't do the other. So it's either all or nothing the way I look at it. 
It's got to be fair across the board. So you have, I would, I would lean more myself to go after the, the people that are just driving and staying for one night and staying in a hotel than somebody that's going to be staying a whole week and spending their tax, they're spending their money as a tourist that's staying for six nights. So all I'm saying is, is there's got to be a happy medium here that uh, if you're not going to do one, you sure the heck can't do the other. As far as I'm, that's where my vote would go. So either you do them both or, you know, or nothing. Because it doesn't seem fair. I would put a salt to be a little bit of a pill in my, if I was a taxpayer of that house that I'd be renting out. And I think you're right, uh, Councillor Shank, that... Uh... I don't think we should differentiate between uh, if if we go down the road of mat tax. I don't think we should differentiate. It's uh, it's accommodation is accommodation is an accommodation. Whether it's at a motel, whether it's at an STA, or whether it's uh, somebody sleeping in somebody's basement, right? So I don't think it's fair to differentiate from one to the other. So uh, is there any other conversations? If not, we'll look for uh, staff's going to be looking for some uh, direction. And I think this one is, should be fairly straightforward. Do, do we want to move forward looking for the mat tax or do we uh, completely not just want to put it on the shelf and, and uh, leave it for another day and uh, or another council? Councillor Pinnell. I'll make the motion that we uh, leave this for another day. So we just walk away from the, uh, the, uh, Matt Tats at this time? Yes, at this time. And, and again, I'll say it again. I'd like to make a motion that we create a, a um, sorry, tourist committee. Sorry. Okay, let's deal with the, uh, Madam Clerk, I see you reaching for your microphone. Let's, so we'll deal with the Matt Tax first. Am I correct? Through your worship, yes, I was going to ask if those could be two distinct motions. So if I'm hearing council right, that council received for information and municipal accommodation tax report and further that council direct that no consideration be given for an accommodation tax at this time. Is that what you're starting to suggest, Councillor Pinnell? Yes, thank you. Moved by Councillor Pinnell. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Martin. Is there any further comments, questions, or concerns? I see you're reaching for your microphone, Councillor Hicks. I'd like a recorded vote, please, Your Worship. Thank you. And um, Councillor Hicks has asked for a recorded vote. It's up to you if there's nothing else. Uh, we'll just do the recorded vote. Go ahead, uh, Jess. Ward 1, Councillor Shank. Sorry, to clarify, this is a motion that no consideration be given to an accommodation at tax at this time. No. No. Uh, Ward 3, Councillor Pinnell? Yes. Ward 4, Councillor Norrie? Yes. Ward 5, Councillor Martin? Yes. Deputy Mayor Calver? Yes. Mayor Richardson? No. So that is four votes yes. That motion is carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And that concludes 8.1. Moving on to Growth and Expansion Services, PS. PLSUBD 2015-019 Ben Points Subdivision Draft Plan Approval. And I see Michael coming forward. And when you're set up and ready to go, Michael, the floor is yours. Sorry, and thank you, uh, Councillor Pinnell. I forgot that uh, yeah, he's uh, claimed a conflict of interest. So we'll uh, move forward without uh, Councillor Pinnell. Go ahead, uh, Michael. Thank you, Worship. Um, previously, this... Uh, draft plan of subdivision proposal came before council uh, for a non-statutory public meeting. Uh, if council recalls, um, over the last couple of years and the bills coming from the province, uh, one of one of the uh, items that the province changed in the Planning Act was that no um, no no further uh, statutory public meetings are required for draft plan of subdivision approvals. Staff felt it was pertinent to hold a uh, non-statutory event. Nonetheless, to give uh, the public the opportunity to speak to council about uh, any comments, questions, or concerns that they had with the with a proposal uh, for a draft plan of subdivision. <clears throat> Following on the the public meeting, staff um, finalized our technical review and uh, have finalized the proposed draft conditions to approval. So staff are recommending approval, subject to. Um, 
the standard list of draft plan conditions with some additional items, um, specifically as it relates to installation of wells prior to final plan approval being granted, um, and upgrading of uh, the existing portion of Ben's Point Road uh, to the satisfaction of the municipality at the owner's uh, cost. Um, so the uh, the applicants, I believe the applicant is, is in the room or a representative uh, from, from the group is in the room if there are any technical questions. Um, I'd be happy to answer those uh, and or the, uh, the proponent. Um, again, standard conditions, but with the, with the additions of um, ensuring there is potable water of suitable quantity and quality and um, further investigation of the existing Benz Point Road and um, commitment to upgrade that portion of road uh, as it exists today to the satisfaction of the, of the municipality uh, at the owner's cost. Great. Thanks, Michael. Is there any questions or comments from Michael with respect to his presentation? Yep. Go ahead, Councillor Shank. So, Mike, as you said, I'm just going to confirm it. So, the, everybody that had the concerns about the road all the way to uh, County Road 8, that's going to be brought up to, you know, because of the excess, uh, that'll be brought up to standard. And the concerns about the lack of uh, potable water, that's addressed also. They were the two major ones. Through your worship, the, yes, that is, that is correct. Those were the primary areas of concern from the public, I would say, is provision of water, suitable water, uh, and uh, access from the site to, to County Road 8. Thanks, uh, Councillor Shank. Thanks, Michael. Is there any other questions for Michael? The e Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Uh, Mike, uh, the easement that's going to be going down to the water, is that going to be graveled? Like, uh, is it going to be like, you know, they're going to take a little bit of topsoil off, but the, it's just a sliver of land, so just so it's delineated that people know that that is the public access to the water. It's not really wide. It's just more of a, you know. Yep, through, through your worship. So that would, uh, that, that's a, anticipated to be uh, dedicated as a block of land to the municipality. So it would, it would come into our ownership ultimately as land that we own. Um, we could investigate through the, um, through the final plan approval process through the engineering design of that space and the roadway and, and all of the infrastructure. Absolutely, we'll, we'll look at that in signage as well. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, it's just that for, just for kind of experiences, when it's delineated and you know exactly that's where it is. So it's only in the developer's interest that he, they have happy neighbors also. So if somebody starts walking over across somebody else's land, and they, well, I thought this was the public access. That's why I'm saying, uh, you know, it's not really considering what the cost of roads are now in that short a distance to an arrow of the strip. That's why I'm mentioning that. And then everybody knows where it is. So. Thanks, Councilor Shank. Uh, is there any other questions of Michael? Councilor X. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Michael, just further to that particular sliver of land uh so it's five meters wide at the road uh, i believe when um the planner was here for for the developer i had asked her about parking provisions and i see it's sort of a rounded but if somebody comes in off county road eight they do have the right to park on that road and use that access to the water now my recollection is it's not particularly nice waterfront but they can use that access, correct? Through your worship, yes, that, that is correct. It would be public access. Um, with it being five meters in width and fairly shallow in depth, the, the water being shallow in depth, we don't anticipate needing a boat launch. For example, this would be passive recreation, can, canoe, kayak, just s simply walking to the water. Um, so it, yes, parking could, could be had around the turnaround bulb, the cul-de-sac. Um, and I, I, given the lot frontages surrounding that uh, and locations of future locations of driveways i think there's a, enough room to accommodate um, the small number of anticipated vehicles there thanks uh, councillor hicks thanks michael is there any questions of uh, michael with respect to his presentation or with respect to uh, the draft plan approval seeing none we have a staff recommendation that council received for information the growth 
and Expansion Services PL SUBD 2015-019 Ben's Point Subdivision Draft Plan Approval Report for Part Lots 13 to 15, Concession to Former Geographic Township of Fredericksburg, Part 1, 29R10885, Town of Greater Napanee, and further that council approve the draft plan of subdivision PLSUBD 2015-019 as identified with the, within Appendix A to report SR 462-2024 as it is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms with Lennox and Adam County official plan, and confirms, sorry, conforms with the Town of Greater Napanee official plan subject to a number of conditions that are contained within your agenda. Moved by Councillor Nori, seconded by Deputy Mayor Calver. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, thanks, Michael. And I see you have another one, but we'll get uh, Councillor Pinnell back in here uh, forthwith. Welcome back, Councillor Pinnell. Moving on, growth and expansion, PLVALC 2024-007-2626 County Road 41, request for validation of title. And Michael, you're on the floor again. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the request for validation of title uh, before council this evening um, is something that comes up uh, almost seems like once a year, uh, give or take. What uh, this why this is coming about is because there's a um, proposed transfer of land uh, at this property 2626 county road 41 and through the uh, process of uh, checking that they're confirming that there's clean title to the land uh, the lawyer uh, for i'm not sure if it's the disposing party or, or the purchasing party has identified uh, that the initial severance um, of this land uh, back in, I believe it was 1983, um, used the incorrect stamp on the deed. So in 1982, there would have been a provisional approval from the land division, the county, that the then county land division committee uh, to create this lot as a separate, separately conveyable new lot. When the conditions were fulfilled and the deeds were presented to the committee uh, for final approval, uh, the incorrect stamp was applied. So that was the stamp saying this is a lot addition instead of the stamp to, that would otherwise say this is approving a new lot. So it was just simply using the wrong stamp, but it, it does not provide clean title to the property. Uh, it's been operating as a separate lot since 1983 when it was thought to be, have been created um, properly. Uh, so it was just a, an administrative error back in 1983 that's that's looking to be corrected here today. Great. Thank you, uh, Michael. Is there any questions of Michael with respect to his report? Sorry, Your Worship. I will note um, I, the th last portion of the uh, recommendation is that Council uh, give consideration to waiving of the, uh, the typical application fee. Um, since this land has always been in the same ownership since 1983, there's been no way of private landowners finding out about this issue until today. Um, and unfortunately, it the issue does lie with the then uh, county land division committee. Great. Thanks, Michael. Um, I think that's going to be part of the uh, recommendation as well. So if there's nothing further, we do have a recommendation that council receive for information, growth and expansion, PLBALC 2024-007-2626 County Road 41 request for validation of title report and further that council grant the request for validation of title to PIN 45079-0131, part of lot 21, concession 7, former geographic township of Richmond, part 1, 29R2825, and further that council authorize the clerk to execute the certificate of validation contained within this agenda, and further that council agree to waive the application fee given the error was made by the land division committee in 1983. Moved by Deputy Mayor Calver, second by Councillor Martin. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, next up, naming rights to the Recreation Center 16 McPherson Drive. And I see Ms. Mannion's coming up. So when you get settled in, Annie, the floor will be yours. Thank you, Your Worship. Happy to take any questions on this report. 
Oops, sorry about that. Anyway, I was just pulling it up on my computer. Does anyone have any questions with respect to the naming rights uh, for the arena at 16 McPherson Drive, formerly known as the SPC? Go ahead, Councilor Pinnell. Uh, thank you, Worship. Through you, uh, Annie, thank you. I'm just wondering if you could uh, release what the name is so everybody at home will know. Thank you. Through your Worship to Councilor Pinnell, the recommended name at this point is the Best in Bash Arena. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Pinnell. Does anyone have any other questions or comments for Annie? Seeing none, Best in Bash, I think they are a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a, a local or a, a developer that's in our area that is developing the old Dixon farm. Am I correct, uh, Michael? Uh, through your worship, yes, that is correct. And I think they, they've got a, uh, a want to try and develop uh, a large number or a large area in our municipality building homes for for our municipality yes that your worship that is correct great thank you um is there any other questions that comes out of what uh what i'd have asked go ahead uh, deputy Eric Hover. yeah i'm just looking and it doesn't matter uh but it was posted on bids and tenders but then it was posted on social media accounts and contact companies via phone and email is that going to be the new procedure going forward for various uh, things, or is that just a one-off on this one? I guess uh, you're up, Annie. Go ahead. Through your worship to Deputy Mayor Calver, um, on any large tenders, we put them out on social media. Um, this one, we were hoping to get a few more bids, attract more attention, so we did do some cold calling. Um, I'm not sure if that is something moving forward for other tenders that we will continue. Okay, thank you. Yep, great. Thank you, Deputy McElroy. Is there any other questions or comments? Go ahead, Councillor Hicks. Through you, Your Worship. <clears throat> Sorry, Annie. Uh, are they firm on the arena part of Best and Bash? I don't know. I like, I like Center, Best and Bash, because it's not just an arena. It's actually community center. It's just a question, a thought. To your worship to Councillor Hicks, I can have a discussion with the group and see if they're open to changing arena to center. Thanks, uh, Councillor Hicks. Is there any other questions or comments with respect to the naming rights uh, for the arena? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to make a comment that Best and Bash is a great name for our hockey teams to live up to. Thank you. I, I thank you, uh, Councillor Martin, and I was wondering when somebody was going to mention that. So thank you for doing that. Go ahead, uh, Deputy Cower. I, for one, like the Best and Bash Arena. I think that's just fantastic. I'm sure there's going to be some further conversations in the not too distant future with respect to refining the name. But uh, uh, we welcome this company to our area and thank them for uh, for the investment that they are making in this area. And uh, you know, hopefully, they'll uh, be around for a while. Uh, is there anything else seeing none thank you and uh and at this point i, I guess i really should uh, mention that we'd like to thank uh, the strathcona paper center for their continued support they've they've had the spc on the on the arena since it was built and that was what 20 ish years ago if i'm not mistaken so um, we'd like to thank them for the support and, and the continued support in our municipality. And uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, they'll be interested in trying to put their name on something else in the not too distant future. So uh, thank you to the Strathcona Paper Center and uh, welcome to Best and Bash to our community. So uh, we do have a staff recommendation uh, to note and receive and for that council endorse a naming rights agreement for the recreation center at 16 mcpherson drive with the best and bash developments from september 1st 2024 until august 31st 2034 and for that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the agreement with best and bash developments moved by deputy mayor calver seconded by councillor hicks if there's no further comments questions or concerns all in favor of that mo oh, did yeah, all in favor opposed motions carried there sorry thanks uh councillor pinnell Infrastructure Services Summary of 2023-2024 Compliance Inspections for both AL DAFO and Santer Shores Drinking Water Systems. And I see Mr. Gerard coming up. When you get settled in, Andrew, the floor is yours. Uh, through your worship, not much to add to the reports. 
or the report to council. Uh, just take this opportunity to recognize the hard work of our operators and everyone that works in infrastructure to make things work properly. Um, the diligence that our operators show day in and day out to ensure our water system is safe for the public. Um, also proves that our quality management system that we have in place is, is up and running and, and working adequately. Um, and just to note to council that the two uh, administrative suggestions that the ministry suggested during each inspections have been noted and we've taken care of those two areas of concern. Great, thank you. Uh, all good news, so thank you, Andrew. Is there any questions or comments? Go ahead, Councillor Pinnell, and then I'll go to Councillor Shank. Uh, thank you, Worship, through you. Uh, Andrew, is a great report. Um, I just want to uh, to say out to the public to who hasn't had a chance to read the 174 pages of the report um, that uh, both both uh, locations received a 100% score. Sorry, sorry, that was correct, right? Yeah, through your worship, that is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Pinnell. Uh, Councillor Shank, did you have something? No. Good. I just wanted to say, yeah, one hundred percent. You can't get any better than that. So there we go. Kudos to you guys. And I know uh, most of us haven't seen one hundred percent on much, at least in my high school days. Anyways, Mike, and I'm sure you're probably the same. Uh, I look for a motion to receive for information the infrastructure services summary of 2023 20, 2024 compliance with inspections for both the AL DAFO and the Santa Shores drinking water systems. Moved by Deputy Mayor Calver, seconded by Councillor Shank. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion. Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, bylaws. I don't believe we have any bylaws, or do we? I guess we have one, right, Madam Clerk? Bylaw number 2024. 0024 disposition of surplus land 115 117 John Street Town of Greater Napanee. Uh, we'll look for a motion to put it on the floor. Moved by Councillor Shank, seconded by Councillor Pinnell. Uh, just the, for the folks reading at home, it's uh, 115 117 John Street is the vacant lot uh, across from Town Hall, right across the street from where we are this evening. So um, if there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, ready first, second, and finally passed. This sixth day of April, 2024. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion's carried. Sorry, ninth day of April, 2024. Um, information reports from members. Do any members of council have, uh, are looking for any information with respect to uh, reports that, that uh, can help clarify anything this evening? Uh, just just one uh, matter, Madam Clerk. Um, do we have an indication or do we have um, um, an idea as to when our procurement uh, um, audit is going to be returning? I know we've, we've sort of been waiting for it, but uh, we haven't heard anything lately. So, Through your worship, I have been advised that we should be receiving a draft report in the first half of May. Uh, at which point, I believe that would be presented to Council um, and then once the report is finalized, it can be released to the public. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, inquiries. Uh, do any members of council have any questions or inquiries? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Cower. Yeah, I was just wondering with all this beautiful weather we're getting and uh, boaters are actually getting out and getting more active, uh, when we could expect to see the uh, concrete blocks put back into place and the little dock put down there. It's uh, like I say, the weather's the weather's unbelievable. There's boaters going up and down the river every day now. Yeah, and I guess the uh, opening of week pickerel season will be fast upon us, seeing as the first weekend of May. So, um, can we maybe uh, see if we can get some information with respect to when when that's going to be, and then we can pass that information on to uh, to council, and they can pass it on to the public for the people that are asking. Uh, is there any other inquiries before we move on to notices of motion? Seeing none, are there any notices of motion this evening? And I know that Councillor Pinnell, I think, had one. Uh, we're, we're looking to make a notice to motion or a motion, Councillor Pinnell. Well, let's try the motion first, if I can get the support. And if not, then I'll, it'll be a, a notice. Uh, I'd like to make the motion that the Council for the Town of Napanee strike a tourism, tourism committee. 
Great. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we need, uh, I think we need a motion to accept a motion this evening, do we not? Sorry, Through Your Worship. Um, with two thirds majority of council, the matter can be considered tonight. Um, otherwise, it would be considered at the next regular session of council. Or given that we're having a special meeting on Monday to talk about committees, well, we may put that on the special meeting agenda if it's otherwise. Um, with two thirds majority, the matter can be considered tonight and voted on. Okay, so um, and I actually, thank you, Madam Clerk. I'd forgotten that we do have actually have a meeting on Monday with respect to the committees. Is this something, uh, Councilor Pinnell, that um, we can have Madam Clerk add on to the agenda for Monday, or would you rather do it by motion? And we'll, we'll see if we have two thirds vote this evening. Um, it, it doesn't make much matter to me. We're here right now and we're talking about it. It's a quick vote. Okay, so we'll need a vote to see if we have the two thirds to entertain the motion. Am I correct, uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, and through your worship, the motion would be that council waive the notice period and consider the no notice of motion put forward this evening. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Mr. Satterberg, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, I just want to let uh, uh, Council know that there was a discussion earlier today about one of the other committees that in the discussion on Monday, you may find that there's a desire to create a new committee that is connected to tourism, but also to economic development in general. So it could be an opportunity to combine two committees together. And once you have the discussion on Monday or on the 15th, whatever that day is, once you have the discussion on the 15th, you may find that um, it may lead you in that direction anyway. With the new knowledge, I'd like to withdraw my notice of motion and we can look into this on Monday. Thank you, Councillor Pinnell. And that should be uh, all we need then, Madam Clerk. Is there any other notices to motion or motions? Seeing none, uh, new business. Does anyone have any matters of new business this evening? Seeing none, announcements. Does anybody have any announcements they'd like to make this evening? Councilor Pinnell. Uh, thank you, Worship. I have two announcements to make. One is uh, Yesterday at the eclipse ceremony up at the SBC it was a fantastic turnout and I just wanted to thank everybody uh, from staff that was involved. It looked like it was going to be a nice day and we were going to be able to witness totality, but we, we didn't. Um, but it did get dark and it did get light. And so it was a great day. Um, the glasses that were provided by the town of Napanee, uh, I, I, I really liked them. You know, they had our our logo on them and, and the date on them. So it was fantastic. So I want to say thank you very much for everybody who was involved. There was a, uh, a great band as well called Schoolhouse and they were out of uh, Ottawa and uh, a four piece band and they were, they were really good. Um, my second announcement is it's a little self-serving. Um, on April the 18th, myself and Jamie Sobolski from my FM will be uh, holding a Name That Tune Trivia Night at the Legion up, Upstairs um, Hall. And it's in support of Hospice Lennox and Addington. So all proceeds will be going to hospice. And we're asking for teams of four, $20 per person. Doors open at six. Trivia starts at seven. There'll be lots of laughs. There's prizes. Um, so I'd like to challenge um, people in this room to put together a team or a couple of teams as well. But uh, that, the date again is April the 19th, which is uh, a Friday. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Pinnell. Are there any other uh, announcements? Uh, Deputy Mayor Gower. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just so everybody is, is know, knows and is aware, the uh, Napanee Raiders, they've, uh, they've taken the Todd division, um, which is a, a big win for them. Uh, they're now starting off to play off at Clarington, and uh, game two is uh, here Saturday night, April 13th. 
uh, when game five is uh, going to be here Tuesday, April 19th, or sorry, 18th. And then again, uh, it'll be here again April 21st, if need be, to go to game seven. So I think everybody should they can get out and see their local team come on and bring this win home. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Gower. Yep, the uh, the lads did very well to get out of the division, played some good hockey. So let, let's hope that uh, they go a lot deeper into the playoffs. So is there any other uh, announcements anyone would like to make? Uh, seeing none, I'll make an announcement. I had the honor this weekend to go both on Saturday and Sunday to the uh, Napoli Gymnastics Club, which held their inaugural gymnastics meet and an invitational meet that uh, attracted I think in the area of 600 people to our, to our area. Um, the club did a magnificent job of, of taking a small venue, small gymnastic club, and, and, and hosting a lot of people from out of town. And uh, I had the honor to, to go and uh, award some gold medals to a few young ladies. And uh, you can't replace the smiles on some of their faces that uh, it didn't matter whether they received a, a medal or a ribbon. But uh, it, it was really neat to see some, some, some young ladies. Um, and I probably will get the termination, term, ter, terminology wrong, but to do some moves on the mats and the pommel horse and the high bars. And, and you could tell the ones that they had never stuck that thing before and they did at, during a competition and they were so excited. And, uh, but kudos goes out to the club. They had all kinds of volunteers from the club, be it um, members of the club, be it moms and dads and, and, and uh, um, grandparents. Um, so, uh, Kudos to Bill Pearson and all the uh, volunteers that uh, made that thing possible. It was the first inaugural, and I'm sure from the uh, the uh, number of people that came and the smiles on their faces, it will continue on and on uh, for many years to come. So uh, thank you, Bill, for your, your due diligence, and I know that uh, um, I think this was the thing you were looking for to, to be done, and it took 82 years or 81 years, but congratulations. So, But congratulations to all the members there. So uh, it was really cool to see. So. Um, sorry, is there any other announcements? Seeing none, the forward calendar. Is there anything in the forward calendar that anyone would like to make mention or comment on? Seeing none, the uh, council resolution tracker. Is there anything on the council resolution tracker anyone would like to speak to? Seeing none, I uh, look for a, a motion uh, to confirm the proceedings, a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council Corporation Town of Greater Napanee, moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Calver, seconded by Councillor Martin, ready first, second, and finally passes ninth day of April 2024. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion's carried. Motion for adjournment. It's moved by Councillor Hicks, seconded by Councillor Pinnell. If there's no further comments, questions, or concerns, all in favor of that motion? Opposed. Motion's carried. Thanks, folks. Uh, been a productive evening, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on Monday.